Hello and welcome to our A to J Author new author training for fall 2020. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's project manager. This is video three in our training series. Video three will cover macros and functions. For variable macros, we'll talk about what they are, how to format them in A to J Author, where you can use them in an A to J guided interview, and how to customize your interview using them. For functions, we'll talk about what they are, where you can use them in an interview, then we'll cover seven specific function examples, and finish off with syntax reminders and additional resources where you can find more information about the other functions available in A to J Author. Starting with variable macros, let's talk about what they are. They are a way to call up the value of a variable in the question text, a learn more, both the prompt and the help, in field labels, radio button labels, and signposts. You can use information the end user has already given you to personalize the information, remind them of past answers, or specify when they are making a follow-up choice. Here's the format for including a variable macro in an A to J guided interview. Where you want to use it, you type in double percent sign, bracket, the name of the variable, close bracket, double percent sign. So where can you use a variable macro? You can use them in the question text itself, within Learn Mores, both in the prompt, that's the question the user avatar thinks, and the help, which is the reply the guide avatar gives. You can use them in radio buttons and field labels and in signposts. This is an example of a variable macro used in the question text. It calls out the user's name, which was given in a previous question, to personalize the interview for them. This simple addition can go a long way towards making an interview feel customized to a specific end user. This is commonly commented on in user feedback as increasing the user's confidence and comfort level with the authoring tool. Here is a variable macro in a learn more prompt. In this example, the end user gave you the name of their agent and you asked a follow-up question of whether they'd like that person to be their children's guardian as well. In the example, you can use the agent's name already saved in the answer file instead of just saying, why would I want the agent to be my children's guardian too? It clarifies the object of the sentence in a quick and easy way for the end user. This is an example in a learn more prompt. It's the reply the guide avatar gives to the end user's question in the previous slide. It again serves as an easy reminder to the end user about who you are talking about. Instead of generically named options for your end user to pick from, you can use variable macros to use specific names that they have already given you. This example relied on asking the end user the name of two people that they would like to make their agent. Then a follow-up question shown here that asks which one of those two they would want to make their primary agent. The format here is the same as the other screens. Double percent sign, bracket, name of variable, close bracket, double percent signs. This just shows the same sort of thing with a field label. They said Jane Doe is their primary agent. Now they can clarify what legal powers to give to Jane to avoid confusion with their secondary agent. It takes very little time for you as an author to add these little extra touches that greatly reduce the confusion an end user may experience while completing complicated legal paperwork. Finally, you can add variable macros to step signs as a final icing on the cake. For example here, I use the user's name and the word hello to address the sign to them specifically. You could do something like Allison's information instead of plaintiff's information once they tell you that the plaintiff's name is Allison. You can do more than simply use a variable macro to insert an end user's name in a simple question. For example, in a repeat loop, it's particularly helpful to call out the name um, or whatever that piece of information is that you're looking for. Um, you collect the name first and then you move on with the follow-up. If the end user is entering multiple people, it helps them greatly remember who specifically you're asking that follow-up question on. You can display information collected in a repeat loop to the end user in a learn more. So for example, if you have a question that says, do you want to add any more assets to the list you've given me? You can have a learn more that says, what assets have I already told you about? And then in the help, you can use a variable macro to call out all of the assets they've already entered. So for example, it can say, you've already told me about your house, your car, your boat, and your jet ski. 
And instead of using a slash, like for child slash children, or asset with the S in parentheses, or is slash are, because you're not sure what the proper word is, you can use what information the end user has given you, like how many children they have, to set a new variable called child or children TE to the correct word, either child or children, and then use that in a macro in a follow-up question about their children or about their child. Same thing goes for asset. If there's one, if they give you one, then you can set it to the word asset. If they give you more than one, you can set it to the word assets. Um, same thing for is or are. You can use the proper um, word in place of the slash by using a variable macro. Now let's talk about functions. So what is a function? The function is a built-in action performed to alter data collected. So data is collected from the end user and stored in variables. Functions allow you to manipulate that data within the variables. You need to wrap the variable name in brackets when there is a space in the variable name itself. So here the format is function, whatever the function is that you're going to be using. And we'll talk about seven specific ones next. Parentheses, brackets, name of the variable, close brackets, close parentheses. The most common place to use functions is in the advanced logic section. Here's an example of a function that calls out the user's age based on their date of birth and then uses it in logic to test whether they are over 18 years old or not. If they aren't, they're taken to a follow-up question that says they don't qualify to complete the guided interview because they aren't 18 years old. You can also use functions in the question text itself. In this example here, the end user has told the software when they received the notice date. And then in the back end, in the question text, the author has done the notice date plus 30 and then turned that into a date to display to the end user using the date function. So you can use math here in the question section to figure out when they have to file a response based on 30 days after the notice date and then convert that to an actual date to tell them when they must file the response by. This is the age function. We saw that in the first slide about using it in logic. This function allows you to convert a date to an age in years. So for example, the form requires a birth date for users, but is limited to being used by people over 18 years old only. You can then, instead of asking the successful end user, if they're over 18 and then their birth date, you can just ask everyone the one question about their birth date and then use the age function and a logic statement to test if they're over 18. It saves the end user who ultimately will be using the interview from answering that additional question. The syntax is just the word age, parentheses, bracket, name of the variable, close bracket, close parentheses. It's used with a date variable to convert a date to an age in years. The date function converts days into month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format. It's important to remember that it is the month, then day, then year format if you're using this outside the US. For example, you can use it to determine a deadline for an answer 30 days from the notice date. Syntax is the same sort of formatting with the function date, parentheses, name of the variable, or bracket, name of the variable, close bracket, and then this example is adding 30 to um, the, the variable, the date variable, and then converting that to a date. So you can see it in the screenshot here, how it would function an in interview. But you can also just convert um, any number of days into the month, month, day, day, year, year format as well. The today function returns today's date. So this is used to determine if a user say is within a statute of limitations. So today minus a variable date will tell you, for example here, if it's been more than 90 days since the incident happened. Today is also used to set limits on a calendar. Um, you can use it as a minimum or a maximum and it will restrict the user's input on a calendar when they're um, entering some date in a field. It will either prevent them from entering dates in the future if the maximum is today, or prevent them from answering with a date in the past if the minimum is today. Has answered returns a true false value if a variable has a value. So you're literally testing if the user has answered this variable. This is a common example when you have to have the client's full name 
And some people have a middle name, some people don't. And you don't want to have an extra weird space where the middle name would be in full name. You can test if they've answered middle name. If they have, set full name to first, space, middle, space, last. Otherwise, set full to first, space, last. It avoids that empty, that extra space, extra empty space, if they don't answer middle name. Same syntax. Has answered, parentheses, open bracket, variable name, close bracket, close parentheses. Contains, it's a relatively new variable. It evaluates if a variable contains a specific text string. So for example, if an author wants to identify people who say they have issues related to domestic violence, when answering a general what's your legal problem question, you can search a variable for a text string value. So my example here is I'm saying if legal problem TE contains the word violence, I want to take them to a follow-up question about uh, that issue. So the syntax is contains, parentheses, bracket, name of the variable, close bracket, comma, and then whatever word or phrase specifically I'm looking for in quotes, because I'm looking for a specific text string, close parentheses. Ordinal returns the ordinal form of a number, and it's usually used with a repeating, a repeat loops counting variable. So if you want to return first, second, fifth, 714th, whatever the ordinal version of the number is, you can do that by using ordinal parentheses child count. There's no bracket around child count here in the syntax example because child count is one word. You only absolutely need the brackets when you don't have or when you do have a space in your variable name. Here there's no space in the variable name so it isn't required. Sum lets you return the total value of all the values entered for a repeating variable. So if you're asking the end user to list their expenses and you're storing that in a repeat loop in a, a variable called um, client expense value NU, for example here, you can then set a new value, client total expense value NU, to the sum of that one repeating variable. So they tell your, your expense their expenses one at a time. You can ask follow-up questions like what is the expense? Is it paid weekly, bi-weekly, whatever? Um, and then you can use A to J and the sum function to add up all those individual values inside the variable into a new total and then display it to them to confirm. A couple of syntax reminders. The function names like dollar, ordinal, sum are applied to the variables with parentheses. So you wrap the variable in parentheses after the function name. If you have a variable with spaces in it, you must also wrap that variable in brackets inside of the parentheses. And to show the value of the variable or a function applied to the variable in question text, you wrap that in a variable macro. So here, for example, if I want to display the dollar amount of their total assets, so I'm converting it into the standard dollar with a period and two um, decimal places after that, I can do uh, percent sign, percent sign, dollar, the function, parentheses, bracket, the total asset variable, close the bracket, close the parentheses, and then wrap it in double um, percent signs. You can see a list of all the functions supported by A to J author by going to our website, a to J author.org slash content slash functions. It's also available in the authoring guide as well under the function section.